because I've been feeling like a bit of an egg. Oh, you're a TikToker. God, I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> but we will make it work regardless. Consistency. I think that's my word of the year. Oh, this is so good. So good. But I'm especially not gonna get emotional because this base is looking real flawless and I don't wanna ruin it. You girls know I'm a blush girly. Yeah. Small, just a little bit. Trying just a little bit. Hello guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you've never been here before, my name is Emma Thompson Hill. Thank you for joining me today. Today we're doing a little get ready with me. I did this like cute little grungy going out outlook. It is so simple, no lashes, just beautifulness. So I'm gonna talk you through the base, through the eyes, through the lip, everything that I used. And we're also gonna catch up about life because it's been a little while since I did a video like this. The sun has been setting whilst I've been filming this video. So we're gonna go back in time, but it might be a little bit brighter then because that was about an hour ago. So I hope you enjoy the video. Hi, it's me from the past. Oh my God, I've not filmed a video like this in so long. So this feels so strange, but I just blow dried my hair and I put it in a little roller. I don't really know if the rollers did anything, but it looks cute. But anyway, I'm gonna put it behind my head. How are we guys? Happy New Year. It is currently January 19th when I'm filming this. This is just a Bobbi Brown face base. I got that before Christmas and I forgot how much I liked it. I just wanted to do a little chatty get ready with me today because I've not done one of these in so long. We're gonna do like this little bronzy eye makeup look. I did that around the festive period and I really liked it and it's so easy. So I just wanna show you that. And just have a little chin wag, catch up. January is nearly over and it has been mediocre, I feel like. Like I know everyone is always hyped in the new year because it's like new year, new me. And I just have not felt that energy at all this year. Yeah, it's just felt very meh. Like I haven't felt motivated. I haven't felt, I haven't felt great. Like I felt good, like I'm happy enough, but I've not been like new year, new me, let's smash 2023 guys. I just feel like it's been a lot of pressure. I can't lie. Like the whole like starting the new year and it just can sometimes feel very consuming. And like you're supposed to change your life overnight when obviously that just doesn't happen. So I'm easing myself into it. I feel good. I especially feel good because I'm filming and we're gonna keep that consistency going through this year. I got my eyebrows done yesterday. Oh my God. So I haven't had my eyebrows done for like best part of two months because I was supposed to get them done in December, but I went to London and my train got canceled and my eyebrow appointments was the next day. Like all the trains, nothing was running back up north. So I had to rebook and the only space you had was late January. So, I finally got my eyebrows done yesterday, just like a wax and tint, and I got a lash lift. So I've not had a lash lift in so long, and I just really needed that, because I've been feeling like a bit of an egg. I can't lie, like, just I've been feeling very pale. I had no, like, no eyebrows done, no lashes done, but I got my hair done last week, so I got that topped up on the balayage, which I love. But yeah, the hair, um, sorry, the eyebrows, mm, like, they don't grow out of control, but it's just, without a tint, they just look like there's nothing... Well, it, it does look like there's something there, but they don't look as good as they do right now. Anyway, I'm gonna use this. I've not used this in a video with, with you guys yet. You'll have seen it if you follow me on TikTok. This is the Pink Honey Honey Glue Brow Gel. And I've been waiting to use this while my eyebrows were like already tinted to see how it looks. Anyway, I've got a little cup of water here. So I dip the spoolie in the water. Get rid of the excess. You put the spoolie in here and squeeze it around and it makes a paste. I have never been a do my eyebrows before my foundation kind of girl, but this is what it tells you to do. So this is what I've been doing and I love how it looks. I don't know if you'll be able to tell as much because my brows are tinted now, but when they weren't tinted, you could really tell that like, they were sticking up and looking cute. And this works. Like I've never used a brow gel that actually like properly keeps your brows stuck up for all day. So I'm very impressed with this and it's very cheap. Oh yeah. Yeah, baby. They look so good, especially now they're tinted. Oh. And it dries quite quick, so you wanna work with it and just keep like sticking it down. That looks so good. I'm very much obsessed with this. By the way, everything I use will be linked down below, as always. I'm trying to think what's new. What is new in my world? Honestly, not a lot. <laughs> I feel like I really love doing Vlogmas and you guys that watched it will know that I really enjoyed it. And I feel like that's what I needed to like get me back into the swing of YouTube because last year I feel like, I don't know, like I feel like I have a very busy life, but I can make excuses all day about how busy I am. You just have to do it. 
You know what I mean? Everyone is busy, but if you care about something enough, you'll find time to do it. So I'm really happy that I am committed to Vlogmas this year. Um, I mean, I tr I've tried to do it. No, I, I definitely did it a couple years ago. I tried to do it last, well, 2021. And then I had so many issues, if you remember, with my, like, card, my all my footage corrupting. I couldn't edit any of the footage. And that was just, I was, oh. I was going through it December 2021. Yeah, I was like depressed that month because I couldn't get any content out and I really wanted to do Vlogmas. This is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation, my ultimate fave, I'm not gonna lie. Um, this is the shade Duvel because I'm very pale at the moment. To be honest, even this might be a little bit dark, but we're gonna make it work. Shit, I feel like I've put too much on. This is such a pretty foundation, I will never not love it. I, I love all NARS foundations, I'm not gonna lie. Sheer glow, I can take it or leave it, but this and the, I've forgotten what the other one is, but it's in like a tall bottle. I love that one. Anyway, that was what I needed to get me back into creating on YouTube because last year I feel like, yeah, I put videos out and I did a, I did so much traveling last year. So I put out a lot of travel vlogs, which I really enjoyed doing and I feel like you guys liked, but it was like, I wasn't doing much sit down content and I really missed that. Like, I, don't, I think I did maybe like one or two girl talks last year, which is crazy because that was like, one of the first videos I ever put out, it was like hauls and girl talks. So I really am bringing that back. I'm actually gonna film a girl talk after I film this. <laughs> so yeah, I feel like I always tell myself the excuse of, oh, but I'm just so busy a lot of the time, this, that and the other. And it's like, babe, if you are passionate enough about something and you wanna do it, you will find the time. So what I'm trying to do right now is find the time, make intentional plans of doing things and actually following through with what I say I'm gonna do. That's one of my big problems, right? that I have all these ideas and things that I wanna do and I know what I wanna do, but actually executing the idea is a whole nother story. I talk about that a lot with my therapist because um, I think it's made me form this kind of opinion of myself that, yeah, I'll say I'll do it and then I actually won't do it. Like, so it's almost like a lack of belief in myself. Some of you might look at me and think, what? Like, lack of belief, like, you're so confident. And I, don't get it twisted, I am confident, but I think sometimes everyone has things that are problems, like subconscious problems that you have. Am I making sense? <laughs> yeah, I think I've just built this little subconscious thing about, yeah, I'll say I'll do it, but it's not gonna happen, is it? You know what I mean? Because we all know me. I can definitely say I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, and it doesn't happen. So, 2023, I really wanna work on the conviction of my words. So here we are, filming, editing, yeah, because even though most people come up to me now and say, oh my God, you're that girl from TikTok. I don't class myself as a TikToker. I through and through class myself as a YouTuber. I don't know why, because YouTube is like, okay, over double the amount of followers that I have on YouTube on TikTok. So I get that's why, I, excuse me. I understand that's why people think I'm a TikToker, but, I've definitely been doing YouTube the longest. Well, I've probably been doing Instagram the longest, but everyone has Instagram. I feel like because YouTube takes so much more effort, it's really a labor of love. Um, it's not easy to like be creative, be entertaining, create your videos and then edit them as well, like and put them out. Like it's so much more time consuming than TikTok. I mean, I could just take a picture and post it on Instagram right now, or I could just take uh, a TikTok and post it right now. Whereas YouTube, like it takes so much longer. And I think I'm always really proud of like the content that I put out on YouTube because I know how much time and effort went into it and I end up creating something that I'm really happy with. Um, not saying that I don't do that with Instagram and TikTok as well, but I think, I just feel like YouTube is, like me. I love YouTube and I have always loved YouTube ever since I was younger. So yeah, even though people think, oh, you're a TikToker. God, I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm a content creator, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, I'm just trying to stay on top of my little content calendar. I can't lie. Juggling them all is stress. By the way, this is the Huda Beauty Concealer in Cotton Candy. I really like this concealer. Um, I'm just blending it with this little Real Techniques, Reels Techniques? Real Techniques brush. I feel like using a concealer brush has really upped my makeup game, like, because it just, you get it in there, so you keep the coverage, because if I was using a beauty blender, like, some of it would go away, because it soaks up some product. I feel like I've really perfected my base routine, I can't lie, so you're gonna see that today. Anyway, my mind is in a thousand different places. I'm so sorry for being a scatterbrain. You don't wanna come here and fucking see an influencer be like, oh my God, my life's so hard, it's so stressful. I know, it's redundant, but 
I don't think my life is hard, definitely not hard, but um, juggling all three platforms and trying to do like original content for each, it can be time consuming. Especially when you're like me and you are a procrastinator. It takes me a long time. It takes me a long time to just do t certain tasks. I've always been like that. It takes me a long time to work. I think I've got the wrong bronzer. Basically, I'm using the Pink Honey BFF face frosting. I have this in two shades. One of them's a bit oranger than the other one. And I think I've picked up the more orange one, but we will make it work regardless. I really like this stuff. It blends out really nice. Anyway, it just passed my five year anniversary of being on YouTube. And I still do all of this on my own. I don't have an assistant or anything like that. I don't have an editor, but I actually did outreach for an editor in December, but because it was vlogmas and I needed everything to be up quite promptly, I just decided to edit it all myself. But I'm really thinking about getting an editor for this year because I just wanna not burn myself out or spread myself too thin, which when you are juggling everything can be a lot. I'm really annoyed that I've got the wrong bronzer. Oh my God. Yeah, so the key word for 2023 is consistency. I think that's my word of the year. I was gonna do one of my little, um, you know, last year I did the video about starting the new year and making goals and this, that and the other, but I just was not feeling it because I wasn't feeling motivated whatsoever. I have had like a bit of a goal setting session, but I think I need to do like a proper one and just figure out my goals for, actually I'm gonna do it in quarters this year. So like quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, because making a plan for like the whole year can just feel very daunting. So I have made a plan for my first quarter of the year, which is good. I've actually planned all my YouTube content for the first three months of the year, which is good. I think we've managed to make that bronzer work. Yeah, but yeah, word of the year is consistency. I went back to Laura Mercier powder. Oh, this is so good so good worth all the money so i take it on my damp sponge tap off the excess and i like pat it into the skin like that it's fucking flawless look at this so good it like blurs your skin and i'm a dry girly so i really don't like to over powder but i think putting it in with the sponge is really good and I, when i tap off the excess whatever products like left on here I put it like on my chin and my forehead so it's not too powdery. I love it. Anyway, I really feel like I should have made a plan for this video because I feel like I'm just kind of scatterbraining all over the place. But yeah, I'm just feeling a bit, like I'm happy. I do feel like in myself, I'm happy. I'm feeling a bit meh. Does that make sense? And I think one of the big things was I was not checking in with myself a lot last year because I feel like I was so go, 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 especially through summer. To be honest, it started from like, June time, June all the way up to October, I was just go, 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 go. I traveled so much, which I'm so grateful and blessed for because I think last year was probably the best year of my life. It was also just a lot. And I just want a bit more balance this year. Like I said, I feel like I wasn't checking in with myself enough. So I'm trying to really make it a priority now to like, my main thing is like do my morning routine. So on my morning routine is things like make my bed, have a shower, do my skincare, uh, pray, check in with myself. So I've got these like little questions that I ask myself. So like, how are you feeling? Like what emotions am I feeling? How do, how do I feel on a scale of one to 10? Things like that or like something that I'm grateful for. So I can actually, a lot of the time with me, I'll just be like, go, go, go. And I actually don't realize how I'm feeling. I don't check in to say, oh, I feel a bit anxious today or I feel a bit this today or I feel a bit that today. And then it leads me to feel a bit, um, foggy headed all the time so i really want to make sure i'm checking in with myself more um and then hopefully build a nighttime routine i feel like i'll start with a morning routine like i said in my goal setting video last year start small don't try to do all the things all at once ease them in so again i'm thinking i'm going to make myself some quarterly goals like personal goals so i feel good about that because i feel like that's definitely working towards something that's healthy for myself because my eyebrows got done yesterday i don't think they need a lot but i'm just gonna put a tiny bit of pencil in them the sun is setting outside, so I hope the lighting isn't going really weird. Mm, the brows are looking delicious. Going in with the bronzer, we're doing Nars Laguna. I actually started using this little Nars brush. I don't know what it's called, but it's kind of like a kabuki style. I really like that. This is a mini of the bronzer, by the way, because my big one broke. So yeah, I feel like everything is really good with my friends, family. Oh, I'm expecting another, well, 
I was gonna say niece or nephew, but we found out the other day that it's a little girl. Ah. I'm expecting a niece, my first niece. I have two nephews, if you guys know. I don't show them on camera though, because my brother and his family don't like to be on camera. But I'm expecting a niece, which we are literally overjoyed with. Some of you guys might know I lost my nana in, at the end of October, my nana passed away. As you might be able to tell like through my videos, we are a very close family. Um, my mum has, how many siblings? Four siblings, one lives down south, one lives a little bit away. But my mum's two sisters both live in the little village that my parents live in. And they've always lived there all their life. The same village that my nana lived in. So we're a very close knit family. I have a lot of cousins, we're all very close. So my nana was really like the matriarch of the family. Um, my granddad passed away when I was about, maybe like four or five. Um, so it's always been like my nana on her own, like pretty much all my life. And then she met a man, I think I was about maybe 15, maybe 14. She met someone and got married to him. So when I say like my granddad or I say my nana's husband, that's who I mean, he's called Eddie. That was really nice. But through my childhood, it was just my nana. Like um, me and my cousins always used to go to my nana's house all the time, every weekend, because literally she lived five minutes from our house. My nana was just like, what she cared about most was family. That was her thing, like, she wasn't really a career woman, like, she left school really young. Um, she did, like, various, sorry, there's fluff in the air. She did various jobs, like, she was a cake decorator, she worked as, like, a waitress at, like, restaurants, all things like that, but her main thing in life was her family. I'm not gonna get emotional, because it's okay, but I'm especially not gonna get emotional because this base, is looking rough flawless and I don't want to ruin it. In late 2018, we found out my Nana got diagnosed with breast cancer. Luckily, it was a very treatable form of breast cancer. The doctor had said she will die of old age before she ever dies of breast cancer. But I think my Nana has always had a health anxiety maybe. Um, I remember like she used to come to my house and she had like one time she had a cough and I was like, Nana, you should go like get your cough checked out. It doesn't sound good and you've had it a few weeks. And she was like, no, no, no. She was a very stubborn woman. She was like, no, 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 I'd rather die than know if there's anything wrong with me. So I think like she'd always had this health anxiety or maybe like a fear of the doctors or things like that. When she had got diagnosed with breast cancer, her breasts had, ha had actually been, like her nipple had been inverting for quite a while and she never went to the doctor about it. So then when she went, we found out it was cancer, but luckily it was a very treatable form of cancer. I think she ended up having like a tablet form of chemotherapy. I'm not super clued up about it, so I don't know, but she didn't have to have like the, is it called radiotherapy or her hair didn't fall out, nothing like that. She had a very treatable kind of cancer. She didn't even have to have an operation, but I think being told you have cancer just sent her into a complete downward spiral. So she ended up she actually ended up suffering really, really badly with anxiety and depression. And when she first started suffering, it, the anxiety was like the big one. So she got really anxious about um, leaving the house. We thought she had dementia because she was acting as if it, that was the case. Um, she used to get really fearful that Eddie, her husband, was going to um, just leave her. So she used to like do strange things like she'd start sleeping in all of her clothes um, and with her shoes on because she was scared that someone was gonna come in the night to try and take her. She became really fearful of leaving the house. She hated, she wouldn't go to the hospital. In the end, she actually refused to go to the hospital to collect her cancer drugs, which actually made her cancer um, grow and migrate. But anyway, I'll tell you about that later. But she would not go anywhere without her Eddie, her husband, and she just became a complete shell of herself. She was not herself at all. Like, my nana was very full of life, vibrant, funny, loved all of us, loved life. And she ended up becoming a person that I really don't recognize, um, which was hard because that is how she had sort of been for four years. So it's so strange, like seeing this woman that was like the head of your family, so important to you, so important to everyone, just become a stranger because I swear to God that was not her. I feel like her death was hard and it was really sad and it has been sad, but I feel like, I don't know if this sounds bad or not, but it feels like she died four years ago because the person that she was when she passed away was not my Nana. Yeah, it's just so strange because it's something like anxiety and depression you don't think about in an older person, but that shit is real. And when the mental health nurses came, they are taught when they told us it was like depression and um anxiety we were like what i think because that's something you don't even realize is prominent in older people 
but I honestly feel like because their generation, like my Nana was, she was born in 1944, so that would make her like late 70s. I think because they went through so much and they were always told, keep it in, hold it in, don't show any emotion, crack on, that's what you gotta do, crack on with life which is very much the attitude that my parents have because that's what they have been told growing up from their parents. They do have this attitude of you've got to crack on and I feel as though all the things that my nana have been through in her life built up and built up and built up and then when she's got this news about her illness, like it's all come spilling out and she can't control it anymore. So that's where she's suffered with really severe anxiety and depression, which you know what, I feel like our parents' generation, our grandparents' generation might think that Young people nowadays are soft and wear fairies and snowflakes and whatever. But I really feel like it's good that we talk about our mental health a lot because it'll enable us to not hold things in and bottle it up and bottle it up to the point where we get really ill. So yeah, in the end, my Nana was very poorly mentally. Um, and then she ended up actually refusing to go to the hospital to go and get her drugs. The cancer actually ended up migrating and she got pancreatic cancer. And then she died like within a month. It's really sad. It's funny because you'd have moments with her where like she'd come, you'd, she'd come back to herself and you'd see like the old person, but they were few and far between. And she was just, I think she was just unhappy and anxious and she didn't understand what she was feeling and going through, which is so hard to see, like see this person that you've idolized and looked up to your whole life be so poorly. That was a lot. That has been a lot. Where was I even going with this story? I can't even remember now. So yeah, Christmas was very strange without her. It's first Christmas without her. My mum actually got um, a ring made with her ashes in that I think I'm also gonna get one as well. It's so nice. I think I'm just gonna get like a signet ring with her ashes because they put it in glass and it looks so nice. So I think I'm gonna do that. I've seen so many photos over the past like few months that I've never seen in my life. Like pictures of me as a baby, pictures of my Nana, pictures of my family. And honestly, that's made me so happy. So I've actually gone the other day and bought a film camera. I got it on Depop. I'm going in with blush, by the way. This is the Mina 371 blush. That might look scary, but it is, but it is, but it is so nice. I've been using this a lot. I used to do like a cream blush and then blush on top. You girls know I'm a blush girly through and through. But this, you don't need a lot. I really like these Mina products. I had a meeting with the team at Christmas and they're so nice and the products are so good. It's such a pretty flush of pink. Yeah, so I just bought this film camera because I take so many pictures and I used to love disposable cameras, but I really feel like I need to create like physical memories. Like having pictures on your phone is good, but I wanna make, have photo albums of me when I was younger um, for my kids to look at and stuff like that. So I have bought a film camera because I don't want to use disposables all the time because so much plastic and it's cheaper to use film. That's going to come this weekend, I think. And I'm going to try and do like a roll of film every month and then put them in photo albums. So I'm really excited about that. So yeah, that's really what has been going on in my life. Oh, that's why I was telling you that story about my Nana. So basically the day after my Nana's funeral, oh, this is so strange. My mum had gone round to my brother's house to, I don't know, I think she was like getting something from him. And my sister-in-law wasn't there. My mum was like, um, oh, where is she? My brother's like, oh, she's gone to the doctors. And my mum was like, why has she gone to the doctors? And my brother was like, mm, she just has. She got back home and my mum saw that she <laughs> she had um, had an injection in her arm or had, had a blood test. And my mum was like, oh, are you okay? Like, what's going on? And then she was like, okay, we need to tell you something. Um, and it's so funny because at the wake of the funeral, everyone's gone up to my brother and his wife, well, his fiance, and saying, oh, when you're gonna have another one, you're gonna have another one, do you want more, wah, wah, wah. And which I feel like is such an invasive question, but anyway. And they were like, oh, I think, to be honest, I think they were like, we're gonna wait a bit, yeah, we're gonna do proper lane on, I believe them. Next morning, my mum's gone round and she had a blood test and she says, right, well, I might as well tell you now, I'm pregnant um, and our 12 month scan is next week, 12 month three month scan is next week. That was literally the best news that we could have ever got after losing my Nana. And I literally said, when we found out, I said, if this baby is a girl, cause they've got two boys. I said, if this baby is a girl, I swear to God, this is my Nana reincarnated. She, when she got the gender scan, we found out it's a girl. And oh my God, I cried so much because I'm like, the baby could be anything. It doesn't matter what gender the baby is. But I feel like, I honestly feel like that's my Nana reincarnated. I don't know if that sounds crazy, but... 
So that's some good news, which we're very, very, very happy about. Ah, oh, love that so much. Okay, we're gonna do the eyes. So this is the Bobbi Brown Longwear Cream Shadow Stick in Golden Bronze. This is what she looks like. Um, I got this like given in a box, like a PR box. This is so good. Okay, let's do it. Let me just show you what I do. So I'm basically just gonna draw it all over my eye. You can really be messy with this because we are definitely gonna clean it up. I'm just gonna take a flat brush like this and we're gonna blend the corners. This is just such a pretty colour. And you can literally throw this eye together in five minutes. And it's kind of like a dark brown, grey, gold kind of mix. It's so nice. I need to see if they've got any more colours of this because I would love some more. I'm just going to take a little brush like this. I'm actually going to put it in my bronzer just to diffuse the corners. Like it just really softens it out and adds a bit more depth. And then I'm also going to take it underneath on my waterline like not on the waterline just underneath where my eyelashes are i'm going to use quite a light hand for that because i don't want too much down there then i've got this really really small brush like this and i'm actually going to take a little bit of the bronzer again and just blend that out i really feel like this is kind of grungy looking and i really like that and you really don't have to be super neat with it so you kind of give this like effortless sexy vibe that's literally it how easy is that i'm just gonna go in with some black eyeliner on my waterline i really love it and i feel like because it's quite grungy i haven't been wearing fake eyelashes with this look i'll show you what i do i got a lash lift yesterday so i don't need to curl my eyelashes but i'm gonna use Too faced better than sex mascara i really like this because it's kind of clumpy and with this look it'll be good so yeah, there's some family things that's happening. I've got such good friendships at the moment, which is really making me happy. And I've also, this feels weird to say, but I've been dating someone for a good few months now and it's going well. And I feel like I really like him. Oh, so weird to say that. Like I'm not opposed to love, but I think, I'm not picky, but I just know what I want. I know what I want and I'm not willing to settle because I know I make myself happy. So I'm not going to bring someone into my life for the sake of it. They have to enhance my happiness or, you know, make me see things in a different way or just bring me joy. And a lot of people are stressed. I can't lie. So yeah, I've been seeing someone, dating someone. He is not my boyfriend yet. Um, I can't believe I just said yet. <laughs> Who knows, it might all go tits up. We're praying it won't, but maybe it will. But I am not opposed to finding love. I have dated a lot, like in 2021 and 2022. I feel like I've always had someone that I'm dating, but this feels kind of different. So yeah, we all hope for the best, but I think I'm not, I'm not scarred after my last relationship. You guys know who've been here for a long time that I had a very public relationship. And I, for one, will not be doing that again like i won't be having a very public relationship and i know people are just interested like when you watch someone on youtube or on social media you want to know what they're doing in their life you know what i mean and i do get it um so if if it turns into a relationship i'll probably tell you guys but will i be parading him around the internet for everyone to see absolutely not <laughs> the things you cherish and love the most in life you should keep close to your heart that's why like you know i do show my parents from time to time i do show some of my family um i do show some of my friends but i don't push it out there as much as i used to because i feel like people can be cruel people on the internet can be cruel and also they some people will pick apart and analyze like the smidgy of life that you give them and i the people that i love the most i would ha i don't want them to be misconstrued or opinions to be formed of them when people don't know them so yeah we show bits here and there but not everything all the time i wish you could see the sunset right now it's looking real pretty it's pink and blue but yeah how easy was that eye and it looks so fucking good i'm obsessed anyway let's do the lip so i'm going to use oh that's not sharpened never mind we're gonna use morphe spiffy oh my god morphe's gone under aren't they and i really like this lip pencil this lip is perfect for a matte lip it's so good but i can't lie right I got this lip gloss the other day and I kind of want to see what it looks like. So shall we put it on and then take it off and then I'll put my actual lipstick on. Because it looks so shiny. It's the Makeup Revolution Shimmer Bomb 
lip gloss. And I really want to try it. I've been dying to try it. And this is like the first time I've put makeup on since I bought it. Let's try it. It will not go with this look, but I just really want to see what it looks like. Ah. Uh, she's giving 90s. Kind of looks cute, I can't lie. Ah, uh, that was not what I thought it would be. This is a very 90s, like metallic lip gloss. I think because it has some blue shimmers in there, it really gives off that like silver metallic vibe. Okay, that is cute. I do kind of like that, yeah. But not for this look. Let's take it off. Guys, you'll have to let me know if you like these Get Ready With Me's. Um, I've not done a ton. I feel like it'd be cute though to do like full Get Ready With Me, like shower routine, makeup, hair, outfit, fragrance. That'd be cute. Because I really like watching um, Aaliyah's face and Arnell, and they both do like full Get Ready With Me's. But for right now, I'm sticking to what I know. We're doing the hauls, the vlogs, and the girl talks. I'm doing good old trusty MAC Velvet Teddy. This is just such a good nude lipstick for me. But look at my lipstick, like, I put it on like that, and then it ends up going really strange. Let's say in place, again, Morphe. Oh, yikes. Now let's waft. I need to waft, what can I waft with? No, that's no good. Yeah. Okay, angels. This is the final look. That is such like, I know I've been rambling on so it's took a bit longer, but that is such a quick night out makeup with no lashes as well. The lighting is going. We don't have much lighting left, but that was my full get ready with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you like these videos and I'll do some more because I really want to do a video of my like go-to eyeliner, my wing liner with the half lash. Mm, that is another one of my go-to makeup looks when I'm going out. It was nice to catch up with you guys. I'm doing a, go a girl talk. My next video will be a girl talk. Be excited because I put a, a little question box on my Instagram today and we have got loads of questions. So we're going to do a good gritty girl talk. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Love you. Bye.